Hey everybody, it's Carrie from the Rapid City Public Library, your friendly neighborhood makerspace librarian, back with another science short. And our very good friend librarian Catherine has agreed to bring in a couple more snakes for us to take a look at and learn some cool facts about. So today we are going to be looking at four different kinds of ball python. Hello, it's Catherine with a snake. <laughs> These guys are ball pythons. They're very popular pets. Their scientific name is Python regius, so they're also sometimes called royal pythons. And this is a baby. She is a wild type ball python. Ball pythons are constrictors who kill their prey, generally just small mammals, by biting onto them and then constricting around them and suffocating them. They live in central to west africa sort of in a strip across africa right above the equator and they will often live in burrows of other animals normal ball python is often what it's called or wild type is what they look like without any of those interesting genetics showing ball pythons were kind of considered a boring snake until about 1992 when somebody bred the first albino ball python. Albinos were the first uh, morph, that's the color or pattern, uh, that was discovered um, and that was in 1992. Somebody bred an albino ball python and from there it turned out that there are just a ton of different genetics within ball pythons that cause different uh, colors and different patterns. And ball pythons now come in thousands of different looks, uh, which makes them extremely popular. Of course, snakes are ectothermic, they're cold blooded. That line of little holes are the pythons heat pits. These guys eat small mammals pretty exclusively and they often will find the mammals based on heat. So these heat pits can sense the heat and almost in a way see a heat signature from a mammal. Uh, his morph, he is a firefly enchi. So that means he has three different genes that are affecting how he appears. He has the fire gene, which tends to make the pythons brighter. And he also is pastel which makes the browns lighter and a little more faded. And it also causes a head stamp. Some morphs are primarily identifiable from the head stamp, which is what is the pattern on the top of their head. He's using his tongue. Snakes don't have a nose per se, but they have a pheromonasal organ. So they have a sense organ that collects the molecules in the air and smells slash tastes them. And so whenever he's, one of the things he's doing when he flicks out his tongue is he is collecting molecules to bring it into um, his mouth so, which, uh, so it can get to that veromonasal organ at the top of, on the top of his mouth. He is a spider orange dream, so the spider pattern is this pattern all along his back and then you can kind of see he has some yellow here along his sides and that is where he is color from the orange uh, dream gene he has always been a very explorative snake uh, males are smaller than females in ball pythons like most snakes and the spider is a very popular uh, pattern and it was one of the ones that's been around for a lot longer. So do you think that this guy is just exploring or do you think he's looking for something <laughs> darker or smaller? I don't know. He, 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 uh, keeps going he under likes the table. exploring just a lot. They sort of, snakes don't have necks because necks require shoulders and snakes don't have shoulders. True. So they technically do not have necks. They just go straight from their head to their rib cage. They will sometimes lift up their sort of front quarter 
to see things elsewhere. Thank you for following along guys. I hope you learned some really cool snake facts and hope to see you back next week for another science short.